Hello everyone. Today I'm Muhammad Fari Amirul Birusli. Metric number one four four two nine nine is going to explain my presentation. Actually, my presentation is about selective laser sintering. As you know, SLS or selective laser sintering is a type of additive manufacturing technologies nowadays. Basically, SLS use laser as the power source to sinter powdered material. The powdered material used is typically nylon or polyamide. The laser is aiming automatically at points in space defined by a 3D model and then binding the material together to fabricate a solid structure. The 3D model usually come from the CAD file, such as SOLIDWORK. SLS is quite similar to SLM, which is Selective Laser Melting. Both have the same concept but different in technical details. In SLM, material is fully melt rather than sintered, allowing different properties such as crystal structure, porosity, and so on. SLS mainly been used for rapid prototyping and for volume production of component parts. As you can see from the illustration, the mechanism of SLS is something like that. Firstly, the high power laser is used to fuse small particles of plastic, metal, ceramic or glass powder into a mass that has a desired 3D shape. Then, the laser selectively fuses powdered material by scanning cross-section generated from a 3D digital description of the part on the surface of a powder bed. As you know, 3D model is come from the CAD file. Then, after its cross-section is scanned, the powder bed is lowered by one layer thickness. And the final step is a new layer of material is applied on top and the process is re repeat until the part is complete. Here are some advantages of SLS. Firstly, the sintered powder bed is fully self-supporting, allowing for high overhanging angles from 0 to 45 degrees from the horizontal plane. The complex geometries embedded deep into parts, such as conformal cooling channels, Batch production of multiple parts produced in 3D arrays, a process called nesting. The second advantage is fastest additive manufacturing process for printing functional, durable prototypes or end user parts. The third one, SLS has a good bond strength between the layers. Then, SLS can print parts with hollow section easily and accurately. Then, wide variety of materials with characteristics of strength, durability, and functionality. Then, SLS have good chemical resistance. And finally, complex parts with interior components can be built without trapping the material inside and altering the surface from support removal. This slide show this advantage of SLS. The first one, longer lead time consuming. Thus, only industrial SLS systems are currently widely available. The second one is processing are involved. This process involves when a smooth surface or water tightness comes from SLS pipes which have a grainy surface finish and internal porosity. The third one, SLS can print accurately large flat surface and tiny holes. And the last one is SLS required skill operator to use. It is because the cost of selective laser sintering is quite expensive. Current study of SLS has been made. From the study, it is found that the post-processing methods are employed to enhance the mechanical properties of amorphous polymers SLS parts without damaging their relatively high dimensional accuracy. The orthogonal experiment was designed to obtain the optimal combination of process parameters. The effects of a single process parameter and the laser volumetric energy density LVED on dimension accuracy and warpage of the sintered parts were also discussed. Then, infiltrating with epoxy resin was employed to enhance the mechanical properties of the PS parts. 
Good resin infiltrate formulation was obtained based on the mechanical property test and fractured surface analysis. It is proved based on study that SLS have ability to fabricate solid dosage form with accelerated rock release properties. In this study, two types of polymer are used, which is HPMCE5 and Collidon VA64. The SLS changed the release characteristics of the printlets by using a high-speed laser scanning accelerating drug release from the HPMC formulation. In this observation, it shows that the collidon is disintegrating in small quantity volume of water with laser scanning speed of 300 meter per second less than 4 seconds. The collidon printlets have a decreasing in density and increase in open porosity. It is clearly shows that the SLS in is one of modern medicine manufacturing nowadays due to its ability to create solid dosage form with accelerated drug release properties. The diagram below is gained from X-ray micro CT for both formulation. From the diagram, their internal structure and densities are recorded. Then their open and closed porosity is measured and calculated. The open porosity refers to the presence of empty space inside the printlet that are connected with the external environment, while closed porosity is defined as the post of the printlet that do not extend to the external environment. In the solution medium, a structure that has open pores has its own benefit rather than the closed pore structure because of its ability to fast dissolve in the medium. In both the HPMC and collagen formulation, the porosity trend follows a similar pattern. Printlets subject to a higher laser scanning speed are more porous, which is agreement with their lower mass. As you can see in the diagram, higher density refer to light in color and low density is referred to high in color. From figure 6 and 7, it shows the drug dissolution profile for both formulation. For the HPMC formulation, the increasing laser speed affects the drug release rate from 100 to 100 to 300 mm per second. For the H100 formulation, that have been processing with a laser scanning speed of 100 mm per second, the time consuming for the paracetamol is 4 hours. Instead of H200 formulation, for 200 mm per second, it released at almost 3 hours. Lastly, for the H300 formulation, it has the fastest of dissolution profile at almost 2 hours with 300 mm per second of laser scanning speeds. During the dissolution test, each formulation of the collagen prelates undergoes in the acid medium and have faster rate of dissolution profile rather than HPMC formulation. The dissolution of this collagen shows that the increasing of laser scanning speed is related to the drug release rate. For K100 formulation, the complete drug release was achieved at 16 minutes with laser speed of 100 mm per second. When increasing the laser speed scanning, the time for the drug release is decreased. The picture and data recorded from the slides are gained from this list of reference. As a conclusion, it is clearly states that the selective laser sintering is increasing the drug dissolution profile of the printlets. That's all from me. Thank you.